Hi, Founder fans, Jason here. And today's founder is William Woodford, the commander of the Battle of Great Bridge for the American Patriots, which was the first real battle fought on Virginia soil during the Revolutionary War. So William Woodford was from Virginia, and he got his start in the military during the French and Indian War. Uh, he served for a brief time as a lower level officer under a distant relative through marriage, uh, George Washington. He also became friendly with a lot of other important Virginians like Adam Stephen, who would be a major general in the Continental Army himself. By the time the Revolutionary War rolls around, Woodford has become a little bit of a leader in Virginia and in the Patriot cause, and he's even elected to the Third Virginia Convention. And the Third Virginia Convention was the third of five conventions, as they called it, which were essentially the shadow governments that came together in Virginia after the royal governor, Lord Dunmore, deserved the, uh, dissolved the House of Burgesses. So... William Woodford comes in, he's there, and, well, Lexington and Concord happens, and they need to put together a militia, and since he's there, they're like, why don't you do it? So they appoint Woodford as a colonel for the 2nd Virginia Regiment. Now, he actually goes to Norfolk. Uh, Lord Dunmore, the aforementioned royal governor of Virginia, had kind of run away at this point. Norfolk was the biggest city in Virginia, and he was on the other side of the Elizabeth River. Uh, hoping to come back and kind of skirmish and take some goods from the Patriots. He was encamped on the far side of what's known as Great Bridge. Uh, Great Bridge was a big bridge just south of Norfolk that connected uh, both sides of this pretty prominent river. William Woodford leads about 500 men, about 400 of his own men and 100 riflemen over to Great Bridge. And they stay on the west side of the river. And they are literally camped across a bridge from each other. Now, during this time, uh, each side is a little hesitant to attack the other one. Uh, Dunmore's afraid to attack uh, 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 Woodford because he hears that Woodford just got some new cannons from North Carolina. While this was true, uh, Dunmore didn't know that Woodford's cannons didn't have the right equipment to actually fire. But he did have cannons, and that was enough of a true rumor for Dunmore to be nervous. At the same time... Uh, Woodford heard that Dunmore had just gotten a whole bunch of reinforcements. This was kind of true also, though most of the reinforcements were families and the women and children were not expected to help, and most of the men were not even trained to fight appropriately in this style of warfare. So there they sat, on opposite sides of the bridge, until eventually Dunmore gets up the courage to attack Woodford. Fortunately, by this point, Woodford's numbers had swelled to almost a thousand men. And Dunmore really underestimated this. Uh, Dunmore does send a force down and around to the other to ford the river and come up the other side, uh, and they attack at dawn. Now, uh, Woodford doesn't really take the alarm all that seriously at first, but once he does, he really jumps into action. The British, however, they're crossing a bridge, and they're crossing into fortified encampments that the Patriots have, and they're essentially mowed down as they cross the bridge. Uh, pretty quickly, Dunmore realizes this is a fruitless attempt, and abandons the cause, and in fact abandons Virginia. He would go with his leaders to ships, and they would stay on the ships and continue to bombard Norfolk from the ships, but it's the last time Dunmore would set foot on Virginia soil, and it was the last time Great Britain would ever make laws for Virginia. Uh, that being said, Woodford is really proud of himself, and he actually published a paper uh, discussing what happened. Now, there are conflicting numbers on exactly how many casualties the, the British took, uh, it's somewhere between 60 and 100, depending on who you believe. As for the Americans, apparently there was just one casualty. It was someone who got a wound on his thumb. The only injury in the battle, uh, the, known as the Battle of Great Bridge, as it says next to me. Um, this is the first Battle of Virginia. It's a really important, it's a big motivator for the Continental Army uh, because you're hearing, you know, everyone's going up to Boston for Lexington and Concord and hearing, hey, the Virginians just won a major battle and booted the royal governor. That was big news at the time. Uh, and Woodford deservedly got all the credit for that. Now, uh, he is at this point in the Virginia militia, but Robert Howe, uh, a brigadier general in the Continental Army, shows up and uh, Robert Howe meets with Woodford and they work together to burn down Norfolk. Now, this is a bit of a controversial thing that happens. You see the 
before he crossed the river, when he was leaving the city, Lord Dunmore had already burned a bunch of Patriot houses as revenge for what was going on. Then, after he loses the Battle of Great Bridge, he gets on ships, and they're just shooting cannons into the city of Norfolk, because most of the Loyalists had already evacuated with Dunmore. And this is causing great damage and setting fires. So, no one wants to hang out in Norfolk at this point. Uh, Woodford and Howe make the controversial decision of burning Norfolk down, essentially. Uh, the reason for this, was, from their point of view, was we're going to leave. We're not going to sit here and get cannon shot at us. We're going to leave the city. But we don't want to just leave the city for how to, uh, I'm sorry, for uh, uh, Dunmore to just come back in. So we want to make sure there's no supplies or fortifications or houses or anything they can use. And they burned down the largest city in Virginia. It's really kind of a monumental moment early in the war, really declaring, like, war's on. Now... Despite this controversy, uh, Woodford goes and joins the Continental Army. Again, his distant cousin through marriage, who he had previously worked for, uh, George Washington, was now in charge. Uh, he actually goes up. He serves in the New Jersey campaign for a while. He's wounded at Brandywine, uh, but is able to recover in time to uh, join the Battle of Monmouth. Uh, eventually, he is then sent south to rejoin with Howe. Uh, he goes, Woodford goes south. He's a, he's promoted to a brigadier general in the Continental Army. His unit does get absorbed into the Continental Army, and he becomes a brigadier general in the Continental Army, making him a really significant leader. Therefore, he is sent south because the British are going on their southern strategy, and he is there to help prevent them from taking Charleston during the siege of Charleston. Now, this goes incredibly poorly, and Charleston is taken by the British, and with it, many soldiers, including Woodford. Now, surprisingly, despite being a brigadier general in the army, Woodford is brought to New York City and put on a prison ship. Now, common soldiers were generally put on prison ships. Usually officers, especially brigadier, it's the second highest rank, I guess third technically if you count George Washington as commanding general. Uh, it's the second highest rank you can achieve in the Continental Army. These people were usually treated better. But Woodford was not. He was put on a prison ship where, like many other hundreds, if not thousands, of soldiers of the Continental Army and the different militias, uh, he he dies just seven months later. Now, it's almost impossible to find out what caused his death at just 45 years old, approximately. But, like many, he probably, suffering from malnutrition, got sick and passed away. Uh, that is an assumption on my part, though it's a pretty well-documented hypothesis because uh, it was very commonplace for soldiers of this nature in the prison ships to die of a combination of mal malnutrition and uh, disease. And that is the end of William Woodford, who was a really, really important member of Virginia's militia right off the gate when they started attacking the British at the beginning of the Revolutionary War. Because I'll remind you that the Revolutionary War started in the North. It started in Massachusetts. And yes, they sent George Washington as a Virginian to take over that Continental Army. But there was no guarantee the Southern states were going to actually send soldiers to fight. And Woodford's actions said, hey, Virginia, wake up. We're in this too. And that is what happened. So this video was about William Woodford. I hope you learned a little bit about this forgotten patriot. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe. I put out videos all week long, seven days a week, about different patriots. And definitely hit like, because that is the best thing you could do to make my video worth my time. <laughs> Thank you for watching and hitting like. And I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.